Okay, so I'm back here for part two of this breath first search algorithm thingy. So, um, you know, somebody in the chat had asked, um, this is really hard to follow, you know, could you visualize this? It's a very, very good point. And unfortunately, the way that I'm building this example right now, um, I'm not going to sort of build in a lot of graphics features. So that's a great exercise for you to do. And I do have other examples that do have those features that you can, that I'll link to, you could look at. But I think that we could, at the very least, I could draw it for you what this is looking like. So um, without using actual movie names or actor names, I'm just going to, I'm going to say like movie one, movie two, movie three. I'm going to have, you know, actor one, actor two. I should probably use real names to make this make more sense. Actor three, actor four, actor five. So maybe these actors were in this movie. Uh, these actors were in this movie. Uh, oops, the actors don't have connections to each other. And this, right? So the actors, just it's only in this particular example, the actors only have connections to each other through movies. And somebody else in the chat mentioned you should distinguish between movie and actor nodes. And that, that could be an interesting thing to work with. And you know, depending on how you're visualizing it, you probably would want to do that. But for just finding the shortest path, I don't actually need to do that. So let's say that actor one, uh, act, let's say actor four is actually Kevin Bacon. So what the Depth, oh, sorry, not depth, breath first search algorithm looks to do is I want to pick any actor and find the shortest route to get to Kevin Bacon. And this, we can see here is actor two was in movie two with Kevin Bacon. Actor three was in movie two with Kevin Bacon, or this is the same distance. Actor five was in movie three with Kevin Bacon, and actor one was in movie one with actor three who was in movie two with Kevin Bacon. So this, there's not a lot of possibilities here, but you could imagine a much more complex interconnected network. And if you think about actors and all the movies they've been in and full cast lists, it's massive. Okay, so now let's come back here. Okay, so now what I need to do is actually implement the breadth first search algorithm. Now before I do that, I need to, I need to, um, I need to add a beginning and end. So I need somewhere to start and somewhere I want to finish. So always, the graph always wants to end. I'm going to just, I'm going to have, have a graph, have this dot end and um, this dot start. So I'm going to give the graph object an end and a start node. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, in, well, after I've added all the data, I mean, I'm just going to hard code this in, which is a little bit silly. Um, and I'm going to say uh, graph.set end, uh, I'll just do it this way. Set end Kevin Bacon and graph.set start. Uh, let's just pick some actor from, whoops. Let's pick some actor from that list. It wasn't Mickey Rourke in that list. Let's see if I get this right. Uh, so Mickey Rourke to Kevin Bacon. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to go and in graph, I need to add those functions, set start. Set start equals function. And I'm going to say, uh, you know, actor. And then I'm going to say set end. And then this dot start equals this dot graph. Now if the actor doesn't exist, we're going to have a problem but I'm just going to uh, assume that actor does exist. So I want to pull, I need to get the node. Um, I, need, I mean, maybe I could just keep it as a string, but I want to get the node, the particular node that is the start associated with that actor and the particular node that is the end associated with that actor. Okay, we've got that. Should have put that in the last video, but we've got that. Now, we are ready for breath first search. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to pull, I, I referenced before this book, which is a really great visual explanation, uh, grokking algorithms of this a particular algorithm, but I'm just going to try to write the algorithm from um, the Wikipedia page. But, you know, I could also just explain it to you. <laughs> so what we're going to do if we're starting with an actor is we're just going to say breath first search means check every single edge connected to this actor. Is that Kevin Bacon? No. Is that Kevin Bacon? No. Is that Kevin Bacon? Nope. So all of these that aren't Kevin Bacon should get added to something called a queue. A queue is a kind of data structure that's first in, first out. 
So it's like lining up to buy tickets. If you got in line first, you get to buy the first ticket. So if this is not Kevin Bacon, it gets added to the queue. Then M2 is not Kevin Bacon, it gets added to the queue. Then M3 is not Kevin Bacon, it gets added to the queue. Now when I'm done checking all those edges, I go to the queue and take the first thing off, which is M1, and check all its edges. Well, this, I don't have to check that anymore because it's been checked. So I've got to mark things checked when I check them, and then I've got to check its edges. Nope, so that's not it. So this goes off the queue. Now this is next. Uh, A1 actually then gets added to the queue as well. Uh, then M2, I've got to check all its edges. That's not Kevin Bacon. It's been checked. It's been checked. Oh, that's Kevin Bacon. I'm done. So now I'm done, and all the while I was doing this, by the way, I was keeping track that M2 came from uh, actor three, and then Kevin Bacon came from actor four, so that I will then be able to back up and create a list, a path of those nodes. So the idea is check everything nearest and add that to a queue, and when you're done checking everything nearest, just keep pulling from the queue to check what's nearest to that, and keep going until you find Kevin Bacon. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that helps you understand it a little bit. And now we're gonna, now, okay. So empty set S, the way that this is described as Wikipedia, on Wikipedia is to keep a separate list or set of things that have already been searched. But I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Um, in my node object, I have a Boolean to keep track of whether it's been searched or not. So I could just flag it when it's been searched. I don't need a separate data structure for that. But I knew, do need a queue. Now here's the thing. I could actually like implement a queue and have like, in a fancy way, but it's, this, I'm in JavaScript. It's late, I'm tired, I'm just gonna use an array. Because an array is something I can add to and I can pull off from the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it a queue. I'm gonna say right down here, var q equals an array. Okay, var q equals an array. And then what I'm gonna do is, oh, let's just keep following this algorithm. Uh, okay, so the root, we gotta start with the root. So the root is the start. So, um, var start, this is a little silly that this is kind of redundant, but graph dot get, oh, so I should have this return the value, var start, var end. So that way I can have a reference to it out here. So I'm gonna go to the graph and have it also return this dot start. So I can have the node return this dot end. And now what I'm going to do is, let's, now I've got the start, let's look back at the algorithm. The start's parent is already null. Add root to s. So root's now going to be searched. Start dot searched equals true. That's the first thing. So I don't need to add it to the set. I'm just going to flag it as searched. Oh, then I need to add it to the queue. Queue dot push the start. So uh, now I'm adding it to the queue. Okay, what else do I need to do? Now, I'm going to keep going as long as the queue has stuff to look at. Now it is possible that there is no connection. So you saw that in, my, in the quick demonstration in the previous video, there could be infinity, there's no connection. But as long as Q is not empty, which I could say is while Q.length is greater than zero, I'm sure there's a more elegant way to say that, DQ, which means get the first thing off the Q. I think in JavaScript that is, uh, let's just call this current. Um, equals a q.shift, I think it's shift. Is that right? Hopefully that's right. Somebody correct me if that's wrong. Um, okay, now, if current is the goal, we're done. Okay. If current equals end, uh, console, console.log found, uh, and then I'm gonna say current dot value. So just to make sure this works, I'm gonna set temporarily the start also to Kevin Bacon. Because now when I run it, it should set it to searched, put it in the queue, get the first thing off the queue, and check to see if it's the end. I don't know what this is here. Okay, so let's run that. Found Kevin Bacon. So things are working. If the start and the end are equal, we're good. What's next? I want to check, uh, if it's not, I want to check all of the edges. So let's go through and say, um, 
And so I probably want to say break here too. Break is a way of getting out of the loop once you're done. So I want to say uh, var edges equals current dot edges. Then I want to loop through all of the edges, right? I want to check them all. And I want to say, first of all, I need to check. Was edge, so let's, um, let's call this like neighbor equals edges index i. So if neighbor dot searched already, skip it, skip. So maybe I go and say if it's not been searched. What does it say here? If it's not in S, means it's not searched, now it's being searched. So I'm going to say neighbor, because I'm searching it now, dot searched equals true. I'm checking it. Then I also want to set its parent, like where did I just come from? Neighbor dot parent equals current. So where did it just come from? And then I want to add it to the queue, en queue. So what's that? Queue dot push, push adds it to the end, neighbor. So we can see how this algorithm is working. It's really very simple. It seems so complex, such a fancy name. But we're just saying, start with the beginning, look at everything next to it. Did you find it? Nope. Look at everything next to that. Did you find it? Nope. Look at everything next to that. Did you find it? Nope. And all the while, make sure you don't double check anything you've already checked before. That's really all that's going on here. Okay. Now, let's see. Um, what am I missing? What else? Nothing. Hmm. Let's run this. So let's, let's run this. Uh, here we go. Hey, found Kevin Bacon. Now let's change the start to Mickey Rourke. Now, whenever I do these kind of things, I often end up with an infinite loop and the browser crashes. Let's see if I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, and let's see. Nope, found Kevin Bacon. Now, is this really working? Let's look at, um, so let's every time we check a node, let's console log it. And let's say console log dot value. So we checked Mickey Rourke, who's in Diner, and then we checked a bunch of actors. Oh, and found Kevin Bacon, and we're done. Great. Let's use a different actor that is kind of further down here. These are actors that are in movies without uh, Kevin Bacon. So let's pick uh, Rachel McAdams. Uh, wow, I think we might be done. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add some more stuff to this in a second. But let's uh, add uh, set start Rachel McAdams. We're not actually done because, ah! I copy pasted the wrong thing. Sorry. Rachel McAdams, sketch Rachel. Ah, why is this not working? Why can I not copy paste? Ah, oh my goodness, I copy pasted the file. This is falling, everything's falling apart. Help me. Rachel McAdams and Mickey Rourke and Liev Schreiber. Okay, Rachel McAdams. There we go. Okay, let's do this again. We can see what's going on. Rachel McAdams in spotlight with all these actors. Oh my goodness which was the E-Pray level, all these actors, all these actors, all these, found Kevin Bacon. So I can't really follow this. This is why I need to now go backwards through the parents. So when I'm done, so let's take, this is not helping us follow this, but when we're done here, we should be able to say, I'm gonna create a variable called path, which is an array, and I wanna put the full path in that array. And I'm going to say, um, so uh, path.push, uh, graph dot end, right? Uh, or no, end. That's where we're starting. End. And then I want to say next equals end. Because I want to do a loop to just go from um, next equals end dot parent. And I want to say while, while next does not equal to null. I'll explain this again in a second. While next does not equal to null path.push next, and then next equals next.parent. Okay, let's, I think this is right. Right, what I want to do is, I want to start with the end, and then go backwards. Go to the end's parent, then that one's parent, then that one's parent, and that's one's parent, to trace back to find that path that was found. So, that's what this particular algorithm is doing. We start with the end, then we get the parent of the end, and as long as it exists, put it in the path. And then we get the parent of that, and as long as it exists, put it in the path, and keep doing until eventually something has no parent anymore because it's where we started. 
So the start has no parent. So now I should be able to say, um, and I'm going to actually uh, create a DOM element. I should be able to iterate over the path. Do I have to iterate the bath path backwards? Because what's, yeah, the last thing is the beginning. So I'm going to say path.length. I mean, I could do this in a number of different ways. Minus 1, i goes all the way down to 0. And I'm going to say uh, node equals path index i. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, var uh, text equals an empty string. And I'm going to say uh, text plus equals um, n dot value plus uh, like an arrow. I should get the right arrow key. And then I'm going to say create p text. So what I want to do here is just, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is instead of console logging, create p is a p5 function that will create a paragraph element in the browser so I can see it written out there. So let's see if this helps. So we can see, there we go. Rachel McAdams was in Spotlight with Billy Crudup, who's in Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts, who's in Flatliners with Kevin Bacon. Now I should also have something that, uh, I don't need that last arrow. Um, so if i is not equal to zero, then also add the uh, arrow. Let me just correct that. Uh, and there we go. Now, let's just quickly, while we're here, we're almost done. <laughs> uh, yeah, people are asking the chat, wouldn't this be a good time to talk about big O notation? Definitely. I got to make a video about that sometime, and it will come before this one. Maybe you already watched it because you're in the future. Ooh. OK. Very quickly, just to make this a little bit more interesting, uh, let me do something. I'm going to use a p5 function. Oh, this is going to make it harder, though. I should really just stop. <laughs> I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to say var dropdown equals create select. Um, so uh, what the create select function does is it makes a little drop down uh, menu. And uh, there's some silly uh, CSS styling here, which um, is causing it all to have no like margins, which is unnecessary. OK, so it makes a little uh, drop down. Uh, but I need to put stuff in the drop down. I want to be able to select any actor and see the result. So now what I'm going to do is while I'm going through these actors, this is where I get every actor name. As long as it's a new actor, I'm going to say drop down dot option actor. Watch this. Very simple in P5. Create a DOM element and add some options to it. A number of other ways you could do this. I'm adding this part kind of quickly. Now you can see I have a little menu where I can pick other, any actor. Now, I need to be able to know when do I pick a new actor. When I pick a new actor, when I pick a new actor, it's an event on this DOM element. So uh, the event, this is a P5 function I'm going to call changed. So anytime, uh, I'm going to say run, I'm just going to say BFS. So anytime the drop down change, just run breath first search. And I'm going to now go down and take everything here. That's the entire breath first search algorithm and put that in its own function. Function BFS. There we go. So now just to see if this works, I'm going to, um, what we're going to do is we're going to run the page again. I'm going to change the actor and it ran breath first search, but it ran it with Rachel McAdams. So the point is what I want is to have it run with Paul Reiser. So where do I, um, so this drop down needs to be a global variable. And the drop down needs to be a global variable. <laughs> I've got a lot of messy code here, but someday we'll clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to change the start, set start to drop down dot value. So the actor's name for the start will actually come from there. Now let's do this again. I'm going to pick Paul Reiser again. Paul Reiser was in the diner with Kevin Bacon. Now let's pick somebody else. Ah, this is not going to work. Paul Reiser. It didn't work. So first of all, that's, why didn't it work? Well, a couple things. Number one, it's weird that it's starting with Paul Reiser again. I don't know what the bug is specifically, but there's a major problem. <laughs> See this node object? Remember I was setting parents and searched? 
I gotta start over. All the search has to be set to false, and all the parents have to be set to null. So I need a function in graph, which essentially is like a reset function. And what I'm gonna do in this reset function, I knew I needed that nodes array for some reason. I'm just gonna go through all the nodes. Their edges all stay the same. And I'm gonna say uh, nodes index i dot searched equals false. And nodes index i dot searched, oh no, no, parent equals, you still with me? Are you with me? I'm barely with myself here. But it's about to be the weekend for me. Okay, no, okay, here we go. Steve Gutenberg, Mickey Rourke was in Diner with Kevin Bacon. Uh, Lynn Marta was in, uh, what did I miss? Oh, I didn't call reset. I wrote the reset function, but I didn't call it. Oh, classic horrible error here. Graph.reset. Oh my god. Coding, coding, debugging. Okay, here we go. Steve Gutenberg. Oh, Ellen Barkin. Oh, nodes is not defined. Uh, this dot, this dot, this dot. It's got to be that, right? The this dot song. Never forget. The this dot song. Never forget the this dot song. Okay, Ellen Barkin was in Diner with Kevin Bacon. And Lynn Marta was in Footloose with Kevin Bacon. And Mark Ruffalo was in Spotlight with Billy Crudup. Who was in Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts. Who was in Flatliners with Kevin Bacon. Okay, so this is Breath First Search in two videos. If you watch this the whole way through, that is amazing to me. Thank you very much. Hashtag six degrees of Kevin Bacon, breath first search, algorithm, whatever. You know, there's a lot of details about algorithms, things I'm sure I've missed here. You thinking about the interactivity, you could visualize this. So many wonderful possibilities. Um, I am gonna be done for today, and um, I will uh, see you in a future video sometime. Uh, as always, the code for this particular challenge is in the description, as well as links to other videos and things that I've referenced. If anything's missing, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.